I think everybody is a conduit of spirit. I think everybody is a vessel. Everybody is a vehicle. Whether you're on the forefront of it or whether you're in the background, the very act of existing means that we have purpose, right? We live in a universe of order, right? So to be a healer, all you have to do is start with yourself. If I tried to do the work for others and I didn't do that work for myself, I would, not only would I be stuck in my ego of thinking that I can fix people, but I would be doing them a disservice and I would be doing myself a disservice. I wouldn't have any way or tools or methods to be able to accomplish such a task. And I really feel that the term healer is also misunderstood because I don't see myself as somebody who fixes others. And even though Harmonic Healer is, you know, the brand that I use, the platform that I use, the healer is not somebody who fixes other people's problems or who changes other people. The healer is somebody who holds space for the people to do the work for themselves. So the most important thing I learned was day one of yoga practice with you and our teacher training. When you were crying on the mat and I wanted to walk over and hug you and fix it and make it better because I love you, because I care about you, I was focused on being able to provide a service for you instead of the real core of the issue, which is what you were living, what you were experiencing. So even though I was coming from a good place, I was stuck in my ego because I was focused on what I think I can do for you. And that actually just gave me this moment of clarity where I realized I can do nothing for you other than hold space, be a witness, bear witness to your own healing process. And I think as, as healers, as light workers, what have you, teachers, we all play a role in each other's progress simply because we're in a community. We're not islands, we affect each other. But ultimately, we have to be responsible for our own healing. Nobody, no, people can be catalysts for our healing. People can show us how they did it, be examples, right? Well, that's why we have teachers. That's why we do this work. That's why we go to people who seem to have done the work for themselves. So ultimately, what makes a healer a healer is somebody who is giving, first of all, everything to the divine. I personally, and this is controversial, but I don't believe you can do any healing without God. That is my experience and personal belief. And I know some people will come at me, you know, <laughs> with pitchforks for that. But I believe that you have to surrender to God. Whatever you call that energy, the universe, the divine, yourself. But without surrendering to that higher consciousness, that higher form of being, then where can you look to for an example of what wholeness is? Where can you look for guidance? You have to look in that wholeness, in that love, in that duality that we experience through God. And I think that that's one of those troublesome words that we have, God, right? And God is not just good. God is also chaos and destruction. That duality, the wholeness of that duality is mirrored in ourselves. We are not just compassionate, loving, divine feminine. We are also action-oriented, destroyers, warriors, undertakers, divine masculine. And if we can experience that duality within ourselves, then we can see that duality manifested in animals, in plants, in our very surroundings. And it, our surroundings are what we can use to see God, to understand. So that all comes back down to the question, what makes somebody a healer? Somebody who sees God in everyone and everything and sees it in themselves. First and foremost in themselves, then comes the, you know, I think the rest comes after. And that's not a perfect answer, but that's where I'm at in this part of the state. So this practice is very focused actually on Nod Yoga. And Nod Yoga is essentially the practice of mantra. So Nod, is that vibration of truth that lies in everything. These balls have a vibration, Jupiter has a vibration, your organs each individually have a specific vibration. And truly, everything in the universe has a vibration depending on how fast our molecules are moving, right? Because what is vibration? It's interference within particles of matter. So it's not wind, it's not a force that moves things. It's a force that moves through things. So the whole practice of Kundalini is sound as teacher. 
sound is our teacher. Essentially, you can understand how things are shaped and how things relate to one another in harmony or in dissonance through sound. Yeah. And musicians understand this very well, right? Yeah. When you hear a tritone or two notes that are very close apart, you hear beats in the notes. Like you hear like an interference. Yeah. If I play this bowl, which is a C sharp, right? And then I play this gong. They're very they're very close in the intonation. Pulse is essentially sound vibrating matter, and the matter interferes with itself and it keeps interfering with more matter. And that transition is what makes the speed of sound. So, how do I break this down in a way that's tangible? Which is my challenge for this practice. It all comes down to the nod. Nod is, like I said, the vibration, right? The spark of life. So at the beginning of every Kundalini yoga practice, you call upon, like I said, the golden chain, your teachers, to, because there is a path that has been paved. It, I mean, I didn't make it up, you know? I had somebody teach me what he knew as his teacher taught him. So I'm only handing it down the way it was handed to me. Yeah. And that's the only way I can, because that is living in the authenticity of that practice. And so with any spiritual practice, when you hand it down the way it was handed to you, you're gonna have your own questions. You're gonna to want to put your own, in, you know, in energy into it and share it differently. Uh, and that is the goal: is that you want to evolve it and make it, put it forward. But there is a reverence for those who came before, who planted the seeds, who made it possible for us to have this. How is it that an Indian man from Northwest India, from 500 years ago, influences me, a Mexican woman in the United States in Texas? Right? right? Completely disconnected from their culture as far as my upbringing. But through this desire to connect with God through meditation, I came into this practice. And it changed my relationship with myself. And it helped me understand all of the many facets of God. What God really is, who God really is. And so we have little God, little I, me. And then we have big God, right? Which is the collective consciousness that is God. The collective dream that we all flow into, right? So it's like that analogy you hear of, I am the drop in the ocean, but I'm also the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. So Kundalini energy is life force energy. It's creative energy. It's sexual energy. We use it many times to procreate. When actually that energy, which is found in our root chakra, mm -hmm. can be moved up our bodies to create higher consciousness, to, mm -hmm. to create other things, art, mm -hmm. right? For divination, for divine insight. I mean, we can, that's why monks and nuns are celibate. Mm -hmm. They cultivate their kundalini energy, and we don't always call it the same thing in every culture, but they cultivate mm -hmm. that energy and they use it right. to remain in the spirit. So Kundalini can be very exciting because when you get it, you can get super high. You get high off of your own energy, essentially. And it can get you ungrounded. So that there's a need for, uh, that's why I also like having a balance of Hatha because the Hatha I find gets me on the ground with my feet here. Like I feel like a person, you know? And I feel like Kundalini is, helps me under, transcend the person, transcend this physical form and get into that what I was talking about earlier, particles that move fast. So the reason we have physical forms is because we're, we need to have slow moving matter in order to be able to process and evolve our spirit. And as our matter starts to get faster, it becomes light, right? If we can make our spirits light, then we can transcend this body yeah. and transcend this light. That's why people always talk about vibration and light. Yeah. So raising your vibration essentially means you're moving your particles more quickly. Lowering your vibration means you're moving slowly, right?